Welcome back to 710 Garage. So we're here in the new shop and I thought it might be a good idea to go through some of the pains and some of the planning that had to take place to get into this. Um, we're gonna do this thing really broken down so anybody, literally anybody, can figure out what they wanna do, how they're gonna do it, and hopefully you guys can build your dream shop the same as we did. Some of the first things you need to decide are what the budget is. You may think, I'm gonna build a shop, right? And it's gonna be whatever size. Actually, the size came way later for us in the um, problem of how we were gonna do this. So the first thing we need to do is figure out a budget. So, dollar value. Once you know your dollar value, let's put a value on that. Just for argument's sake, we'll put 100,000. Nice, easy numbers. Now, of that 100,000, there's a lot of things that are gonna come into play on you know, how big you can make the shop, which is gonna end up way down here somewhere. First things first, you wanna spend 100,000. You better check that off with your wife and make sure she wants to spend 100,000 or your girlfriend or whatever. In our case, we were okay with the number that we chose. So, now that we have this decided, the next thing, what do you wanna run? Steel versus wood. The age old debate. So now, this is gonna come down to what style of building you want. For us, we have a shop that has a wall, a very small peak like this, and another wall down here. There is nothing in the middle, it's completely open. Let's say you wanted to go with a shop that came up, had a small roof, went up like this in the middle, another small roof down like this. Let's say you wanted a building of that nature. That's the look that you were going for. Well, because of this center section, chances are you're gonna have poles here or beams. So you'll have those down to the floor, which maybe on your floor pattern or whatever it is that you decide on doing, that may or may not bug you. For us, it was an absolute no-go. So the only way for us to be able to do a wood building was to make a much taller peak like this. Now, maybe to you guys that's not that huge of a deal. For us, for me, it was. The reason is, when you have a wood truss, let's draw a truss right here. So you have a truss like this, Now you have all your webbing in here. That may or may not be exactly how your truss looks, but hey, bear with me for argument's sake. For us to get a 50 foot span here with no beams in the center, I wanted absolutely nothing down here in the floor plan. You have to build this thing really tall to be able to get the triangulation here for the strength for the snow. We're up uh, just outside of Detroit here and we get a lot of snow. So maybe if you're down in Florida, maybe the snow loads aren't that much. So you don't need this big peak to hold all that weight, but for us we do. So this was not the look that I wanted. It was gonna add a lot of height to this building. One, that I can't really use. And two, that wasn't the look I was after. So if you're going to try and use this for attic storage, or you know, you're know you gonna build a, a barn roof, let's say they kinda, I don't know, they kinda do like that. It's like a couple different, couple different angles or whatever. You know what I'm trying to, do you understand what I'm saying? Or maybe not. Anyways, maybe you're trying to have this like completely open. So the inside of your building like us goes right to the roof. Well that up here, all your heat is gonna be up in this area. You're gonna have no heat down here where you're actually working. Again, another reason why I wanted a very low peak. Like this. So that our working area here stayed really warm when we could do it. So, first you need a budget, next you need steel or wood. That's going to depend on the shape and design of a building that you wish. Next, are you going to insulate or no? 
So this is a big one. Now there's many different ways that you can insulate. Um, for us, we had a big roll. So the rolls for us are six feet wide and it goes from the foundation on this side of the building, up the wall, all the way over the roof and all the way down to the other side of the foundation. So you do six feet at a time, you just kind of roll it over, do some siding, roll it over again. The next thing you can do is bats, like in your house, in your wall. Followed by foam, if you want to do spray foam. So for us, I believe the insulation here was, let's say it was 10 grand, I don't know, okay? We did, uh, this was um, the roll, I'll just put roll here, versus foam. The foam quotes that we had for around here were 43,000. And that was comparable in our value. So we did an R6, or an R20. We did an R20 through the entire building, walls and ceiling, and our doors are an R16. So that was R20 for foam and R20 here um, for the roll. If you can swallow that number, hey, it's awesome, go ahead. I couldn't because that number eats into this number up here, which means my shop is now half the size. Wasn't gonna happen. So we went this way. So now you have steel versus wood, insulated. Next thing, where are you gonna put it? So location. This is where you're gonna have to talk to your township or your city. So for us, we have a farm, so it wasn't an issue on size and placement here. But for you, um, you know, let's say this is your lot. You have a nice lot, you have your driveway that comes in here, and your house sits, I don't know, like this, let's say. Here's your house, and this little area right here that I dotted is your garage. So your driveway kind of swings in like this. You're, for where we're at, you need to be five feet away from the property line this way, and five feet away from the property line this way, and then you can only build on so much percentage-wise of your property. So you may only be able to put, say, a 20 by 20 shop on your property. It's not a problem, that's as big as you can go. So that may or may not eat into this budget. Maybe you can put, I don't know, uh, 40 by 80 or something. So again, location's gonna matter. Talk to your city, see what they allow. Next thing is driveway. So if you have a driveway like this and you're only gonna extend it, let's say it's 30, 40 feet, it's not a ton of money. For us, we had to go 300 feet with a driveway. So this driveway ended up being almost $15,000. So we'll put 15 here. That was something I had no idea it was even gonna cost anywhere close to that. But that's what it is. So again, that eats into your top budget. So you have a location, you talk to your city. You know that you can get to the building now. Next, do you wanna run electrical? Do you want a light on out there? Or are you gonna run a generator? What is your plan to be able to use the space that you're building now? So electrical, and what do you want? Do you want single phase, three phase for big welders? Do you need 100 amps of power or 60 amps of power? Depends on what you're gonna do. So this is where you need to sit down and figure out, I'm gonna run three welders, 14 hoists, and a Bridgeport mill. Well, you're gonna need more power than a guy running one trouble light and a little baby air compressor. So that's gonna come in. Are you gonna run gas out there? Do you want natural gas? Are you gonna put a furnace in there to heat it? Um, you know, a mini split, something like that to cool it, I don't know. So do you want gas in the, in the building? So that would be natural gas. Um, are you gonna run plumbing? You're gonna put a bathroom in there. You want a sink. Another cost, right? Now, again, if you're gonna run electrical, gas, or plumbing, it's not that big of a deal. You can do all this through a trench. Plumbing is the big one, okay? The, the reason is you can imagine, let's say this is flat ground. If you have a pipe 
coming from a sink here in your garage and where's it gonna go? You wanna get it to your house, right? This pipe can't be flat because the water will never flow. So you need slope to it. You want it to be down like this, exaggerated, but you need that slope. <coughs> Excuse me. So, depending on how much of slope you need and how far you have to go, that also helps you decide the location. Can I put plumbing out there and get rid of it back to the house or whatever? If, if you don't have the drop here that's required, you may need to put a septic in or a holding tank. So if you want to do a septic system, around here anyways, it's almost $30,000. So if you're going to put a bathroom in, this may end up costing you a ton of money. Again, goes back and eats at this $100,000 budget that you have set forth. Once you know that, what's the next thing? Are you going to run a concrete floor? If you're going to run a concrete floor, do you need to concrete the whole thing or do you need to concrete half of it? Are you going to run two post hoists, four post hoists? You're only going to put your lawnmower in it. These are all things that need to be taken into consideration. If you're going to be running a hoist on it, they say minimum is six inches. You want to make sure you have six inches of concrete in there. So what is that dollar value? Because that may eat again back up into this. At that point, you need to decide, okay, uh, let me actually fix this. We're gonna put concrete floor. Now, what are you gonna do for a foundation? Again, let's go back to our wood versus steel question. So, for us, steel building, which I didn't know any of this until I got into this whole debacle, was if you have a barn, let's say it's whatever, um, this will be 30 feet, this is 50 feet. So you're going to run wood. That means that every eight feet here, 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 etc. this will be eight feet. You need a beam, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. You get the idea. So that's going to be where your beam that goes all the way to the roof connects. So if you have a wood building, you can do exactly like we did here. Drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole. You fill it up with concrete, you put an anchor in, and you put your wood up from that. That may be fine and well. If you're going to do a steel building, you cannot do this. They will not let you, at least where we're at. So you have two different options. You either pour a foundation like this, so you have a footing, and then a, you have a, a footing on the bottom that's, in our case, it was two feet. This right here is 24 inches. That's called your footing, it sits on the bottom. Then our wall is eight inches. So you need to have this all the way around the entire building. Again, like I said, that goes back to the concrete. Uh, let me put foundation here. As you can guess, this foundation and footing is a lot more expensive than drilling 30 holes around your building and pouring a little bit of concrete in. Now, there is one other way to get around it. They call it a floating slab. And a floating slab is, let's say this is your finished grade. That's the floor that you're going to drive your cars on, walk on, everything else. It's very, very thick out here on the edges. And then it kind of goes up like this and it comes down very thick again. So this would be where your wall, your beams sit here. And then it's thinner in the middle, which is whatever, your six or eight inches that you decided you're gonna build. So instead of putting all the concrete in this type of foundation all the way around, you do the whole entire slab. We're out here, this may be 18 inches, so the center's eight or something. So you're gonna use roughly the same amount of concrete, and in my opinion, this will move around a whole lot more than if you set a footing and a wall down like this, four feet down into the ground. So there's some other costs there. 
once you know your foundation, now you're ready to start, you know, getting permits. What are your permits worth? So for your permit, for us it was 50 cents a square foot, I believe. So whatever your square footage of your building is, now you take your permit out of it. Maybe it's two grand, maybe it's 50 grand, I don't know. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna go through all of these costs. Oh, I forgot a big one. Are you going to do the work or are you gonna hire it out? That's a big one. That's gonna change drastically what happens with this number. So <clears throat> if you're going to do the work here, you can probably guesstimate 30 to 40% comes out of this budget. For us, I had a budget that I started with, let's say it's this 100, and I knew that if I hired it out, I would only get, a, let's say it's 40 by 40. But if I did the work myself, I could do a 60 by 80. I decided to kill myself and do the work myself to get a bigger shop. So all of these things are gonna factor in. And I can tell you one thing that I did was I just took a normal sheet of printer paper and let's say that's uh, whatever, eight by 11. Um, I scaled down another piece of paper and I cut it out the size of a car and I did my welder and I did my trailer and my welding table and the hoist and I had all of these things cut out and I was able to take that printer sheet of paper like this and I was able to move all these little boxes around wherever I seem fit. Let's say it's like that. So I can move them all around. I took a picture with my phone and then, you know, I scrambled them all about again until I got the design that I wanted. Then you can accurately see, do I have a ton of area here or do I not? Now, <clears throat> that's a really long way to say there's a lot of things that you need to try and figure out before you decide, is it 40 by 40 or 60 by 80 that I'm gonna build? And it all starts with this number up here. So, yeah, I think that's the stuff that you need to figure out before Obviously, you go and put a deposit down on a building or anything like that, hire a builder or whatever. You need all of these things. They're all very important. And once you know those, you're off to the races.